channel welcome to this video we'll learn together how to install Windows Server 2019 core installation uh, Windows Server 2019 is the latest operating system from the Windows Server family it comes with a lot of great features uh, it continued improving some of the feature that existed in previous uh, editions so in this tutorial we'll learn how to install Windows Server Core Edition. Core installation doesn't have any uh, GUI capabilities, it's just managed through command line and PowerShell commands. So let's start. I'm going to connect to my remote desktop. So here I have Hyper-V Manager. I'm going to install it as a virtual machine on Hyper-V. So from the left pane, I right click on my server, new virtual machine. I'm going to name it WS2019 Core 1. I'm going to store it in different location. Machines. I have a folder already named WS2K19. I'm going to store it in here. Next, the generation. Generation 1 or generation 2? Generation 1, of course, is the first uh, generation of that appeared when Hyper V appeared. It supports both 32 uh, bit and 64 bit guest operating system. It doesn't support any secure boot. And it's more used for legacy or for compatibility. Uh, in my case, I'm not having any uh, server 2008 or 2003 in my environment so I'm gonna go with generation 2 that offers uh, some great capabilities such as UFI based firmware, secure boot and much more but it supports only 64-bit uh, virtual machines next the memory 1 GB is enough actually but I'm gonna give it 2 GB instead Next, next I'm going to select one of the uh, network adapters. I'm going to select this one. The size of my VHDX, VHD, so the format is VHDX, but it's VHD virtual hard drive. I'm going to give it 60 GB. It's enough for now. Next, install operating system no, using bootable image files. I'm going to select the ISO image. Next, finish. Okay, here before uh, turning on our virtual machine, so I'm going to click on settings. Here it shows you a quick overview of the settings that are in place currently. I'm going to just add one more virtual processor just to make it run faster. And I'm going to connect the option to connect it just open the console the hyper v console uh, the virtual machine console uh, it doesn't turn on automatically if you want to turn on the virtual machine you have to click on this start button or from action pane action tab you can select to start so you have to be quick you have to click uh, to press any button quick actually to boot from the ISO image. Okay, here we show you something. The secure boot option goes with the GPT partition style. By default, the partition is formatted as MDR, the old partition uh, for legacy and compatibility purposes. To convert to GPT during the installation or during this phase, we have to enter the pre-boot environment. To do that, actually just click Shift F10. Some computers, you have to click Windows F10, sometimes Control Shift F10, it depends. So, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to this part utility.
Okay, disk part here. I need the disk part uh, environment. So I'm gonna type list disk. So it lists all the disks that I have. I have only one disk, obviously. So I'm gonna select this disk. Select disk zero. Usually we run the command clean to delete uh, the content of the disk, but this one is an empty disk, so that's why it doesn't take that long. To convert it to GPT, as you can see now, the GPT doesn't have any star uh, underneath it, so it's in NVR. To convert it to GPT, just issue the following command. Convert GPT. And successfully converted to GPT format. Good. Now let's exit the preboot environment and click next. Install now. Setup is starting. Here I have four choices. Windows Server 2019 standard evaluation, standard evaluation desktop experience, data, data center evaluation, data center evaluation desktop experience. The first option and the third option are the core installation type. So I will go with Windows Server 2019 standard evaluation. I'm going to accept the terms and conditions. Next. In this case, I'm running clean install, so that's why I'm, gonna, I'm not going to select the upgrade option. I'm going to go with custom. So first we need to partition the disk. I'm going to start new. So to be sure, that's just a warning actually. I'm going to click OK. As you can see, we realized that the disk was partitioned to four partitions. These are required by the GPT partition size rule to run properly. So we're going to select the one that says primary to install our operating system. Next one. Here we go. It's going to take a little while to install the operating system, usually five minutes or even less on a virtual machine. I should pause the video and see you soon. Now that we have restarted here, we open PowerShell again. And we can verify if the new computer's name is, as you can see, it's taking the new computer's name. So now, as I mentioned earlier, we need to disable the IPv6. So we can do net get dash net adapter to have the list of all the adapters. So this is the one we have here, the Ethernet. We can type the command next. We need to type net get dash net adapter binding dash name Ethernet. So it will give a bunch of binding. What is Relevant to us, as we need to disable, is the first one, Internet Protocol version 6. Okay, so to do that, we have to issue the command disable dash net adapter binding dash name Ethernet dash component ID ms underscore tcp. IP six. If we run again, get net, net adapter binding dash name Ethernet. As you can see here, now enable it says false, so it means it's the same. Now technically, if I run an MS lookup, it should Windows should pick up from my default so which is Strange. I'm going to just run an config slash all to verify. Oh, I see why. I'm mistaken. 
to step up to the Oh, here it is. My bad. Uh, and I think it's not even that. Let me double check what's the DC IP address. Yes, the IP address is 10, sorry. 10. Okay, now if we run, let me sneak up, there we go. We get the DS. Default server, which is my domain controller running as. Uh, and as the DNS as well. So we can, for example, I have a connection server, it's HIV DX slash one, but because I didn't join to peer to the domain yet, I have to take the full the FUDN. And as, as you could see, it resolved it. So this is the address for my machine server. Okay, so now that we have renamed the computer, we have set the static IP address, we have set the right DNS, we have set the time zone. Now we need to join to the domain. The way to do it on in the PowerShell command is add dash computer space dash credential and you give the domain backslash the name of uh, the domain admin user dash domain name and dash restart. It's asking for the password. So it's restart. Also, we really don't take a long time to come up. As you can see, it's gonna it's ready by now. Okay. So the safe control I'll delete to unlock. We're gonna press the button here on the top left. So here it says enter credentials for administrator or hit escape to switch user sign-in methods. So I'm gonna hit escape and again escape. We're gonna select other user. So I'm gonna log in with sysadmin. Connected, but you could see here, see user, see submin, and then shell again. I'm going to check that I'm using a domain user. You can enter who am I. So it gives you here the domain slash user. Another method actually to do most of these tasks that we, we've done earlier is to use the sconfig utility. It's a command line utility, very powerful, very helpful. All you need to do is just to select the right option. For example, if you want to join to a domain or to leave the domain, you can click number one. Right now, it's 
join the domain Mercedes at that. If you want to rename the computer, you have to select the option tool and so on. The Windows update settings. This is the way how to install the updates is by selecting the option number six. This whole thing is another utility. It's asked to if you want to select all the updates or recommend updates. In this case, I'm just gonna type R recommended and it will search for the updates. So that was a quick overview of Windows Server 2019 core installation plus some post install tasks. I hope you find this video useful and you learned something from it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.